Hey guys, Saf here reporting live from the cursed city of Centranos. We have made it to Soulcross. We are defeating some of the hardest stages in the entire cursed city. We are on hard mode and these stages are now starting to really kick my butt. They're really, really stretching my roster. I'm at a kind of like a gate kept moment here where I know trying to get through to S19 is going to be very, very difficult. I actually originally thought this stage was impossible, but Timota's has managed to prove me wrong. I do think the six star crushing run there is kind of having a big deal. That's kind of going to probably keep me. I'm not going to be able to get through S19. So I have to go either 20 or 14 and 14. I don't have a Shiromani, which makes this incredibly difficult. And 20 is probably the only way I can get through, but I'm going to have to rebuild everyone up and waste probably about 15 million silver. So these stages are really starting to hurt. Now, the main stage I actually wanted to try and beat was Soul Cross 17 Finite Hard. And the big challenge you've got here is if you don't have a Cardiel, you have no ally attacks, reflect buff, counterattacks, passive counterattacks. The only thing you really have that can do like a passive counterattack is Inquisitor Shamael. And really you need to be taking debuffs for that to work. And that comes at a cost of decreased speed and decreased defense, right? That's always going to be a problem for you. So I've managed to beat stage 17 last night on stream. Now you will need at least one freeze option in your team. This Creed then could be replaced with a Neldor. It could even be replaced with an Alexander, but that will make it much harder with Alexander because he's only a single hit A1. Really, you need the you need the, a Neldor or a Creed and They're very, very, very good for this. This would probably be even easier with both Neldor and Creedon because of Neldor's passive where he can counterattack and triple hit with the A1 as well. It's really powerful. But the way that I've built this team, we, we have double Phantom Touch to try and help us knock some shields down. And then we've got two MVPs really, which is Frostbringer and Elva. Now what's really good about Frostbringer, we're going to get a double hit A1 with a heal reduction. It's a pretty good chance of placing it. It's not crazy, but it's pretty good. It's 50% chance. And then we have a triple hit A2, which has a pretty, as a 100% chance of placing decreased defense if we need. But what's really good about her as well is she brings another increased speed and an increased attack. So it means we have an option to apply the speed buff that doesn't punish us in other ways. Because if you want to use Creonin's A3, that comes at a cost of more freeze attempts or more, more multi-hit attempts, right? So you're always going to like punish yourself by using this ability. So what we can do is use Frostbringer's A3 to give a speed buff after we've, we've outrun that buff. The other MVP of this is Elva. Now you can probably do this with maybe someone like a, like another healer, potentially like an Oella could do this as well. If you can resist the effects of the debuffs. If you can stop the boss debuff and you, you could absolutely run uh, Oella in this spot. Oella's a fusion. Elva was a guaranteed summon. So you've got almost like an accessible two legendaries in the sense that, you know, those legendaries were available without random luck. Now I will say that El Oella is absolutely good for this as well as Elva. They're kind of on the same level. The only difference is you will need the resist with El uh, Oella. You won't need it with Elva because Elva has block debuffs. But what's really cool about Elva is she's going to be able to apply the block debuffs, give us an increased speed. And then we keep getting continuous heals on the on the, on the the A1. But more importantly, every time an ally takes a turn, we're going to heal for 10% of max HP. So the main challenge you have first is how do you survive the first hit? Because you're not going to be able to break this shield. What you need to do is essentially tank the first hit. So I'm putting block debuffs up so that I don't actually take any decreased defense or decreased speed debuffs. I don't want to be slower. But you can see the massive amounts of, of, of sort of maximum HP that I've lost. So what we really need is a way to mitigate that. And Elva is very good for this. And I'll show you exactly how we're doing it. Now, once we've got through the first attack, now we need to use all of our main attackers. We need to break the shield. Because what we need to do now is get decreased speed on the boss. Once we have decreased speed on the boss, it gives us more opportunity, more time to be able to keep the shield down and then start freezing the boss. So we're going to use our triple hit again. We're not going to use the A2 because we want to save that. That's our decreased speed. We're going to use triple hit there. We're going to attack once with Alva. We're going to use another triple hit with hopefully a phantom touch. If we get lucky, we did. And then we're going to use the A3. With Ruella's A3, each of her abilities, each of her attacks has a chance to apply all of the debuffs. So the way that the shield works, if there's one stack left on the shield and you attack it with a debuff, the debuff will ignore the final stack. So what should happen is the first two stacks, he'll be blocking the debuffs. The last stack, the decrease speed goes on. So what we want to do is get the decrease speed on here. We actually didn't get the decrease speed. We got really unlucky. So this is kind of a rerun. You just have to rerun this at this point because you need to get the decrease speed on. So I'm going to run this through again. We're going to get back to that point. Okay, so we got another attempt here. What we want is the decrease speed on the target like this. This is great. Then what we can do is replace our increased speed with the, the Frostbringer. She's going to give us increased speed back. And now we're going to have to take another attack. 
So we wanted to survive two attacks. That's what you need to do. You need to survive two attacks. But now that we've got the decreased speed on, the boss isn't going 200 speed now. He's going to be going much slower. So now we have opportunities to actually break the shield again and actually start applying freeze debuffs to him and start doing damage to him, right? So we, we got lucky. We had a refresh proc again on our, 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 our Royal Guard. So that's really good. Having refresh accessories is going to help you here. We might as well attack here because we want to break the shield. So now we can actually start getting freeze debuffs. So you see the difference of the shield that it's in. We can boost now with OL, with Ruella. We don't actually need Ruella's A1 because you can't steal turn meter. So we might as well boost here. And now we can start dealing damage to the boss because we've actually been able to break the thing. We want to get heal reduction out. We didn't get it this time. That's a shame. We're going to use Elva's A3 because, again, we don't need to break the shield. And then we're going to use his A2 here to try and hopefully get a double freeze. And now we're just in this situation where we want to try and keep going. Now I'm going to replace the decrease speed, get that back on. There's no point using Royal Guard's A3 because it, you can't drop turn meter. Heal reduction. We've got the heal reduction. So now we can actually just tank this through. As long as we stay alive, we're okay. But you can see the value of having it. I should have actually used the booster. That was a mistake. And we're just surviving. The boss doesn't hit too hard. I haven't got decrease attack on the boss. And you'll see the boss, once the shield is up, doesn't really hit hard enough. He won't kill us. So we will lose max HP. That's why we need strategies to restore that. And I'll show you how I have built Elva to deal with that problem. So we're going to run through here. Triple hits as well. We're saving all our big hitters for when we need to re-knock re the shield down. Uh, there's, we actually can A1 here. We could have a 2 if we wanted to, to replace the speed buff. We're going to triple hit here just because we want to get the shield down. And then we're going to boost. So the key strategy, you boost with Ruella when the shield is down. You A2 with Elva when the shield is down. You never really use Creedence A3. You don't need to. We actually got super unlucky there. We didn't get any, any freezes. And then we always keep the decrease speed up every single time. I do have Toxic set on Frostbringer. I don't think it's really that important. The boss isn't taking crazy amounts of damage, but every little bit of damage extra you can have will help you here. So again, we're breaking the shield. You can see we're tanking it pretty comfortably. The champions here aren't exactly built in high defense. It's just the boss here just doesn't hit hard enough at all. So we break the shield again. Decreased speed is absolutely important. Having the ability to get that decreased speed on is what is going to enable this to work. We're going to boost here again. We're going to boost. We want the increased speed. Increased speed on yourself. Decreased speed on the boss. You're creating such a big speed differential. And then we're just going to work our way down. Hopefully we get a double freeze this time. I think we got one freeze. And we're almost through it. One more rotation and we should be good with this. So again, I'm not using any of my, boot, my buff abilities during the shield being down. We need to break the shield as quickly as possible. Things like Relentless Set on Ruella will help. Things like Relentless Set on Creedon will help as well. But don't necessarily go towards Relentless for the sacrifice of speed. You absolutely want to go fast. I'm going to put speed buff up here because I know I'm going to break it next turn. So it's less of a problem. And then we just finish the boss off there. So that is how you do it. That's my best run as well at 76 turns. That's how you do it without Cardiel. It's all about allocation of the right turn meter attacks and also getting your builds in the right position. I will probably be looking at trying to make this more efficient, see if I can push less turns, see if I can break, make it so that it works exactly where I want those abilities to go, speed tune it a little bit more, see how far I can push the turn count down uh, and see if I can actually get this down a lot. But the builds that I've got these champions in are nothing exceptionally nuts. So I've actually just loaded it up in the optimizers so I can show you the full team in the way that I've built it. So I do have a Savage Creodon. He is built with decent damage, but his attack is quite low. Uh, I have managed to put Giant Slayer Masteries on him as well. Frostbringer doesn't even have Masteries doing this job. It would absolutely help with War Master. It would speed up the process. And Royal Guard is in Reflex Triple Refresh. So my Royal Guard is built for like a Hydra style setup where I just want to recycle his A2 as fast as I can. Ruella is in Relentless, but if you noticed in the run we just did, she didn't even get a single Relentless proc. I've got her built at 285 speed. And the key thing, the key strategy that I did that actually made this viable was I put Curing Set on Elva because the update they did to Curing Set meant that every heal that you deal is boosted by 20%. And that 20% heal, the bonus, restores maximum HP. So when we're fighting the target, because Elva heals everyone by 10% every time they take a turn, they're all going to basically restore 2% of their max HP every time our allies, every time our champions take a turn. On top of that, if they have a continuous heal, that's going to heal them an extra 3%, right? 15% uh, maximum heal on a, off a continuous heal. They're going to get 20%. They're going to get 3%. So every time they take a turn with the passive and the continuous heal, they restore 5% of their max HP back. So even though the boss is whacking us and taking lots of max HP off us, 
Elva's able to restore that back to the team. Now you can do it, the same thing with Oella. Oella has every time an ally takes 15% of their damage, they'll get a continuous heal and also has a 30% heal on the A2. So 30% multiplied by 20% means that all of the allies are going to restore 6% max HP when she does her A2 on a three turn cooldown. You also extend some buffs as well. So if there is a continuous heal, that's going to extend that duration. Both of them can do the job pretty well. But this team works, and I think it's pretty, like, the speeds are fast, but I don't think they need to be this fast. You could probably optimize it so that you drain some speed out of other champions and put it all into, like, a Ruella. That could absolutely work. I don't think it needs to be as fast as I've got it. I just threw some speed gear on to try and get them up as quickly as I could. Like, the Toxic set I don't think is massively important either. Probably the Reflex opportunities on Royal Guard was helping a lot. But again, if you don't have triple refresh, you can go double or single or none at all and just run the Reflex opportunities. If you've got some Merciless gear, you can also look at possibly putting the Merciless 4-piece on. That gives you Reflex as well. So there's options available to you. But this team works incredibly well, and it's got me through Fire Knight Soul Cross 17, the hardest Fire Knight, I think the hardest single boss that you actually have to face of all the single bosses in the Cursed City of Centranos, outside of Sand Devil. I think this one's the hardest one. And we've done it without Cardiel, which I didn't think was going to be possible. I think the Curran set really actually was surprisingly powerful. I actually think this set is better now in situations where you, you want to restore maximum HP. I actually used this as well in the, so in the Sand Devil team on my Orogrim to A2 heal my Pythian to get rid of the lost max HP when the boss attacks you. Obviously, he destroys your max HP as well. It's proving to be quite valuable in the Cursed City of Centranos. So I'd recommend everyone start looking at just maybe keeping one good set, right? If you look at the pieces I've got here, I've just I've prioritized speed. Mostly speed here. Speed. And, and this, these pieces aren't even that crazy. I don't need the accuracy on Elva. She doesn't place any debuffs, but it was just a pair of speed boots. Just get yourself one good set of curing that you can move around people if you need to. It's actually quite powerful against some of these bosses that are destroying your max HP. It was the difference between me doing this last night and not doing it last night. The curing set is what made the difference. And then naturally, of course, if you've got a Frostbringer, I know it's a five-star Frostbringer and people will be talking about the Awakenings having a big deal. It's not really because it's given her damage, but she's not the primary damage dealer in anything. She's just basically reducing the boss's defense. We're hitting the 10% max ha maximum HP with Royal Guard anyway. Boss's defense isn't crazy high, you know, it's not like 15,000. But this ability to have a double hitter into a triple hitter, and it's giving you all the buffs you really care about in Fire Knight Hard. Heal reduction, speed buff, increased attack, decreased defense. You absolutely don't need a Ruella. Ruella's really good. You could run anyone that has decreased speed if you wanted to, right? You could use the Royal Guard's A3 to apply decreased speed and just bring another Royal Guard. You don't need the Ruella because you've got a decreased defense on Royal Guard, a decreased defense here. You've got options. You can basically move it around. But Ruella is actually just top tier for it. There you go, guys. So a way to beat Soul Cross 19 if you don't have Cardiel. I think that's probably, probably going to be the biggest struggle for a lot of people is how do I do it when I don't have Cardiel? I am working now on trying to get Cronum built. I've just summoned him today. Uh, I, he'll probably show up in my summoning video that I'm going to release tomorrow. Uh, I am working on Cronum for the Amius boss guide to basically show you how you can use Cronum to almost like duo or solo Amius the Lunar Archon. And I'm working on a number of different champions that can sub in for Venomage if you don't have her, right? A lot of people are using Venomage, you can see in these best teams so far. Uh, I'm still number three with my one-shot Fushan. I know nobody can do that, but if you look at a lot of these strategies, most of them include a Venomage. I want to find ways that you can do it that when you don't have Venomage. She is one of the best for it, but if you don't have Venomage, can we still do it? So I'm looking at lots of different champions and options and trying them out so that we can all benefit from at least defeating Amius the Lunar Archon. It's very important, you know, if you can't do a lot of Sintranos, that's not a problem. As long as you can beat this main boss, it's very important because he holds the majority of these candles outside of 101 stages. And he also holds a big chunk of your remnants, right? The, the summoning for the new mythical. So if you beat the boss every single rotation, that's going to give you half of your overall cursed remnant summons. I'm probably not going to be able to get all of these because it's going to be very unlikely that I can beat these two stages, which is where the 40 from Soulcross are. They're very difficult to beat. But at least with the Amius, I get 100. So I'm trying to find as many different strategies and I'm going to do as many different videos as I can in the time frame to help you figure out how to beat this very, for a lot of people, very challenging boss, right? I've one-shot it, but, you know, I'm an endgame four-year veteran. I would expect to be able to do these crazy teams. A lot of one-year players or six-month players coming into this are going to struggle because of the roster limitations. I'm trying to find 
champions that nobody's really talking about that you might have that you can actually do the job on here. So that's the goal. But we're pushing on ahead. I'm I'm basically trying to clear as much as I can. And then I'll probably have like a week and a half to try and target S19 and S14. But I'll be honest, I'm, I just don't know if I can do this without Shiromani. And I just don't know if I can do this without a six star Morag. That's the two things I don't think is pot. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to give it a go and I do the best that I can. The key thing I want to do is be S20 because I want, if I get S20 down, I can get these double bosses, which has mythical charms. It has more gear. And I'm pretty confident I can do this S24 because I've got enough stars awakened. I've got six, I've got two six stars there. I've got Venomage at five star. I've got four star Raglan. I can do the rest of these stages here. And I can get some superior oil as well. So I really just need to break through S20. But I don't know if I'm going to do these last remnants ones. They look really hard. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.